this session's focusing on reducing blunders the scourge of any chess player how do we reduce the blunders well it's a matter of trying to practice the things we've been working on just personally for us in order to not make a blunderous move sounds simple key thing is within this exercise it's also looking at taking advantage of the opponent's blunders if they blunder we're going to attack the bishop as usual comes here but always remember it's wanting this pawn to open up so that it starts putting pressure here with the queen if the queen gets to here and we get to castle so we'll hang fire on that and we'll castle here getting activated with their knight so where is their knight potentially going I'm just trying to picture where the annoying position would be annoying position probably is coming here with the knight we could bring our knight in here but if we did do that it'll just take doubles the pawns in the center gives us a bit of a cluster but for now i think we'll just jump in and attack the knight excellent could take with the pawn but i think i'm going to just take simply with the bishop and keep the pawns in line at the minute it's taking so now his queen is in that position where they're looking to open this file up so they probably will go and queenside castle but we should start our attack trying to open up that uh, area sorry our attack that area so let's push the pawn up and start formulating attacks towards the queen side not interested the knights come down it's got no protection on it it does look blunderous because the queen can actually take give them a moment to think about what they've done because they're actually looking to try and put a check here and they may just resign now so we'll take the knights can take our bishop obviously because our bishop doesn't have any protection so that's a smooth move but we can take this pawn and be attacking their rook one of the problems with that it's not a problem per se is that we take and then they castle on the queen side and the rook is defending the um the rook we take this pawn and then they have this open file attacking with the queen it's not clear yet they've not got a direct hit on it but it is opening that area up is there anything else that we can do before we do that i think we're going to take it though we're going to risk it for a biscuit take some pieces they've got our rook we've got their rook with a check and we get their rook as well in the corner oh we're not getting their rook in the corner all right so we are going to be a knight up a minor piece up out of that exchange so from the blunderous position the opponent continued making the blunderous moves um it probably could have been equalized i don't know maybe they just shouldn't have taken with their bishop we shall have a look i think the knight move was the blunder the start of the blunderous position they're still going on though so they're looking to put pressure towards our knight they haven't stopped we could attack their pawn just to get pieces off the board we can afford to trade at this point in time so we will just trade and keep trading best possible less pieces they've got on the board the better for us i'm going to bring the knight here see if it can sink in here nothing can move it from this point and on after that so it is blocking this pawn so we will just sit the knight here we're attacking this pawn twice probably is going to push it once yep we could hit the pawn but he's going to push past and he's got a proper passer and i don't think we need to do anything too urgent now i think just moving the king and start moving these pawns up yep okay let's uh push might be looking to get his king in here but he can't go there the knight's there push this pawn we don't need to rush anything and we can take and take or we can just move the king up and capture the pawn whichever one it takes 
So no panic, no overexerting anything. Let's come here, supporting the knight. And we can go and attack the king with a check and get this pawn off the board. We'll put the check on the king, the king comes and attacks the knight. If the knight then takes, we do have this pawn that can support. He does have this pawn that can come and attack. I'm going to go with that. Looking to reduce down as best possible. And just take. King probably comes maybe even. But still supporting with the pawn. Alright. So we can support with the pawn. And then move the rook out of the way. I think the rook's going to put a check on the king though. So we have options coming here or just moving here. We move here, his rook, it's not going to come there because the king will take it. I think we're safer just moving here. Don't need to get too fancy. Bringing the rook here, attacking. And we can bring the king across, I think, just supporting the pawn. Just taking it easy, looking to block off. And so the rook can potentially come here. So go backwards and forwards. Hmm. What shall we do with that situation? I think we'll just come here and then they'll go over there. This time we won't go with the king maybe. And we'll just let them do what they're going to do. This time it's gone in front here. So if he does push then we can push. So it does give us that tempo to actually attack this pawn now. He can defend it, bringing the rook. We can push up onto the rook. Can elevate the rook. Which one is going to be better? Don't even have to do any of that. Could just move the knight in the knight here. That's in a nice annoying position. I'm going to bring the knight out of there. Seeing as nothing's happening. Take it nice and steady. Push this pawn or attack the rook. Probably attack the rook. Well, or push the pawn first. Because the rook would be able to take with the support of the pawn. And they would have a check on our king. So he's back to attacking um, the pawn. At which point the rook can come up. Pushes down, takes the turn. Maybe we need to be more steady. So if we go there. Can still push, but then we can push up. Anything else? What am I missing? Uh, rook comes down. No, he doesn't do anything. Let's go with the rook. So we dance with the knight. Lovely spot there. Nice little fork. Moved out of the way. We can still put the check on the king. And sit the knight here. Start pushing the pawn. Sound like a plan. Does sound like a plan. Time's probably running out. Let's just put the check on. So we're trying to get this pawn pushed up. Does have a pawn majority on this side, you know. It's coming down for the king and the pawns. Are we going to have time to push the pawn up? Puts a check on the king, king moves back down. I think we can push the pawn. I think we can push the pawn and just move the king back down here. Let's just bring the king here. Gonna have to go back up to stop the pawn from getting promotion. Which they have done. So we can move our rook going behind the pawn. I think he'll probably block. Is there anything different that we can do? Any more pressures? We'll attack a pawn here. Looking to come back again and attack this pawn. Saving the pawn. Because if we come here, he's just going to go in front. Let's bring the knight round. Don't want to lose on time. So, coming, supporting the pawn. Going to support the pawn. At which point they do come across. No, they're not coming across. 
let's just move this comes across get the knight here attacking this pawn point they push take it's got a nice little passer there so let's attack the rook rook goes back because it doesn't want this pawn getting promoted we've got three passes now if we take it nice and steady looks like they've left the game so I've got to take a quick analysis on this one just to have a look at the a blunderous nature we were trying to prevent blunders but I think I'm thinking they probably shouldn't have taken with their bishop but maybe we shouldn't have taken the knight but I don't know our position didn't look that bad from the continuation so we jump in want we'll to see what the computer says I don't think it's going to be on our side <laughs> let's take and we started to push towards the queen side because we're thinking the queen side castling and then we take now it's not showing there's any big advantage there at all and the only reason is is because as we showed in the game they can actually take back and then we take here and it's showing draw it's in fact it's plus for them but them grabbing the rook here greedy munching does give us the extra weight so that's how to try and avoid the blunderous positions yep just from there it's even stevens they can capture but it's looking at okay we weighed it up and we said well okay we'll potentially get the rook they captured the rook which is a higher piece in those terms it looks good for them but now we can exchange down didn't expect the queen coming back actually that did surprise us but in any event they're going to be down a minor piece for so the case of the missing piece in this particular game but the idea about this session is really looking at um preventing blunders or trying to stop the blunders you know trying to make sure that excuse me we reduce the blunders that um take place in the games it's not saying it was played perfectly but even the computer showing was even stevens all the way through with those exchanges and it was just that momentary blip from the opponent's side because it was even there okay how to reduce blunders so my focal point in this session is around looking at how i can lessen the errors that we make or not necessarily inaccuracies or mistakes it's blunders you know catastrophic kind of errors that are made in the game that really do impact the game but then i want to be able to see the opponent's blunders and be able to take an action on their blunders as well go to castle Attack the knight. So we're in the top end of the end game now. We've got here pretty quickly. I am bringing the knight here. It looks like they're queenside castling. Because it looks like they're wanting us to take the pawn. We've got to look at the psychology of the game. Yeah, they're wanting us to take the knight so that this takes and then the opening up their attack in front of our king you know I'm going to oblige because we know all about it we know what's happening we can maybe do something to circumvent this kind of behavior I'm going to attack the bishop better the devil you know type thing let's hit this bishop and they're wanting to basically just bring this pawn back into line and they're bringing this bishop here to start attacking across here all a bit fancy and arty but i think what we'll do is take this bishop first 
excuse me and then we'll hit this bishop and trap it in so it's got nowhere to go so that's taken advantage of what I'm perceiving to be a blunder from the opponent because we're able to get a higher piece off the board going to capture and they're tunnel visioned on trying to ramp home now with the you know attacking our king area so we know this how do we get ourselves prepared for it going to get one here get this rook here their king oh they're not doing it they've had enough okay so let's just go and double the rooks doesn't mean we've won anything because we've got an extra minor piece uh, okay let's just take Right, so it makes it a bit more difficult having less less pieces on the board, but let's get the king up and see if we can manage to get across to this pawn. Push. He's got a cluster of pawns here, which can be quite dangerous, really. We leave the knight here. If he pushes down, I think he's probably going to push down. We take, he takes, then he's got a passer. If we take... And he takes, he's only got one pawn there. Hmm. I think we're just going to take out. We don't need to be too fancy. Let's take. Okay, then we can come here, attacking the pawn. He drops down, drop in here. He hits us again. Maybe we don't need to move the knight, but this pawn is going to be coming down and attacking. So let's just bring the king back here, see if the king can support, and let's push this pawn up. At least it's stopping the king from dropping into these. So his nice little three pawns he's got going here, and he's going to have two linked pawns in the center. There is an issue and a concern. Let's just hit one at a time. Let's get the king across. Try and get the king here, blocking this pawn. He may try and do a bit of disturbance so that he gets his king here before ours. Yeah, is that the move? Yeah, so if we did take, then his king can come across and get the pawn in the far corner. We push up, like we said, he wants to get his king here. If he gets his king there, we can run with the knight here, but our king has to babysit the pawn, um, babysit the knight. Anything else? Anything else? Push, we've got a passer. Simple. Don't know why I'm overthinking that. Let's get the knight up. So this has got good distraction maneuvers if we need to do that. This one's obviously coming down and we have to come across. And if it pushes any further, the knight can take it, I suppose. We might be overthinking this situation. Knight's got to check on the king. He has to do something about the check. And not coming in here, he's not coming there, so he'll come here. Our king can't come up because he'll be attacking the knight. Put the check. Don't forget we have a passer. If the king goes shooting here, pawn can go here. Ah, he's, I think they can hear us. I think they can hear us. So it gives us that moment to go here and block the pawn, but also, and now the, now the knight can dance around, can't it? So it's gonna attack one pawn and another pawn and another pawn with a check then the king can take the pawn and then we can rest easy and they've left the game so yep reducing blunders and seeing when the opponent has blundered as well yep so we're looking at the bigger picture not the small details of inaccuracies or mistakes which you know can kind of balance themselves out. We're definitely looking at the blunderers, blunders and trying to take advantage of blunders as well.
we're not wanting to blunder we're trying to attempt not to blunder and now we're doing the computer evaluation because we've done our own evaluation during the game and we just want to see if we did actually make a blunder in their eyes we might feel good that yeah we got the bishop etc but maybe they could have done something else and I think it's always good to do quality evaluation really being harsh on yourself just because you gain an advantage in the game doesn't mean it was actually a good advantage if it's not a good advantage if the computer's like going well you could have done x y and z but if it's too computerized the movement then obviously I'm, I'm not going to wear it so it's still drawish at the minute and we says well we'll take that chance now for them to try and start attacking our king area this is the part i'm really wanting to look at and see so no big advantage until the bishop's jamming itself in but i don't think we took advantage of it straight away did we well we took yeah we did the move order i think in the right way yeah i was just thinking oh we, we could have gone there straight away but the computer's even saying take yeah so that's good so we did the move order okay knowing full well the bishop's kind of trapped in there and that was the blunderous maneuvers and the computer looks fairly happy with us and if it wasn't happy with us it'd have to fight two for nil to convince me that um whatever we did was incorrect but that's where that comes in about the educating yourself and really being hard on yourself if I don't understand the computer move I'll try and get an understanding but if I'm never going to play like that I will understand that if I'm in something like that again I will have to challenge myself and try and attempt to find my own humanized version of what the computer potentially would be trying to find but I can't play like a computer if they do a funky computer move I don't understand what it is I'm going to be hard pressed to bring that naturally into my game so let's see how this end game kind of transpired because again you might think you're doing a perfect end game and then the computer turn around, turns around and goes you, you know you, you actually were losing there so fours, fives drops to a four it's not happy with the pawn move but we didn't want the king to move What's it saying? C4. I'm not playing them apples. This is the sort of stuff, you know, I'm talking about. It's saying C4 here. I mean, the pawn's dropping down like this, isn't it? And it's going to be a passer. In fact, I probably mentioned that in the actual game. And that's saying that that's a good thing to do. No. I can't. I can't. Maybe it's never getting past. That's what it's saying. You know. It's saying take the c4, but no, I think human's going to go like this. And what's the mistake there? Knight e4, jumping in, attacking the pawn. Mm, King g7. What's that about? Has it got a fork or something? No, no. no. okay, yes, it might be a little bit too much that. Under pressure, I don't, you just don't want to see a passed pawn no matter how much I'm going to challenge, you know, and it's challenging me to say C4, I'm, I can't do that. Yeah, I'm going to say I don't want this king coming down here, blocking anything off or trying to get any further down. No, I wouldn't do that. Okay, captured. Let's see if it said anything different. So it's pushed and it's saying King F3 now. So it's just saying get closer to the party. Again, it's still allowing it to come and be a pass, but I suppose that's not going to support, and that's not going to support. In essence, don't need to panic. But still, end game, you don't want to see a pass pawn. I don't care how defended it's going to be. Yeah, no. No, taking. I'm taking it. It's no problem. How much did it drop? It dropped one point. I'm taking it, yeah no problems with that all right okay so the king moves across pawn pushes down g5 which is nice good 
King F5, and we don't want that there. It jump up, did actually jump up, didn't it? Knight E4 was the right, yep. Knight G3 with a check. Oh, it said G3. Knight G3. Oh, so it's coming for the pawn, but he can defend the pawn, so what is the point in all that? No, we'll stick with that. King goes and defends the pawn anyway, like we said. Get the king up. And I think we're fairly happy with this. Yeah, okay, that's great. Nice to challenge. Yep. Yeah. And I always say to myself, well, I bet you didn't take any of that in, but I do. It's all subconscious. It goes in. The lessons, what it's trying to show, um, when I do the evaluation, it does eventually sink in, especially in the end game. I like practicing the end game and don't always get the best moves in the end game because the opponent might be a tempo up or whatever, but it really is improving the transition from the mid through to the end quite nicely. And sometimes even from the opening to the end, depending on the position, if there's a quick and dirty tactic that, well, I don't, I'm not a tactic man, but if there's a position that allows that quick and dirty tactic type thing, then we'd be, we'd be a fool not to take it. So that's reducing blunders. Okay, still on the reducing blunders section. I think this is the last game for the reducing um, blunders section. See how we get on here in this game. See if we can spot any blunders the opponent might make or if we've already in a blunderous position. So let's hit this pawn in the center. Take with the knight. We defend with this knight. We brought the bishop out. I'm gonna take the knight off the board. Probably taken with this pawn, yes. Try and make space for some castling, basic chests if we can. Let's castle. Yeah, we haven't got the bishop blocker set, have we? Thinking of getting this here and pushing the pawn up because they're just going to have this diagonal. But that might be a bit too slow, might it? I do like the bishop blocker. It does benefit me. I'm going to try it anyway. Just get this pawn here, then I'm, I think I'm happy. Uh, that might have been a mouse slip, might it? But we can't take advantage of it anyway. Let's get the bishop out. It's just that he's going to have to do some fancy footwork to get his king here to get the rook over across. So they'll lose time, but I, I can't do anything about it at this moment. So it's a blunder, but we can't take advantage. Only thing we can take advantage of is development in pieces in time. But... Nothing's clear here. Attacking the B pawn type situation. I just hope now they've just because they've made a mistake that they don't come come out with the magic now. Disconnected. Here we go. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Because we're wanting to practice reducing blunders and the opponent made a blunder there um, well it's not a blunder but it, it's ended up being a blunder um, because they didn't castle properly he's wanting us to hit this but they, we're going to get a check on and he's going to get the pawn at the bottom as the queen's going to come here he gets the pawn so we may as well move the king out of the way because that is what is going to be happening Eee, by gum. Okay, let's hit the knight. 
move the knight away. Let's move the knight away, which is not really expected. They're just dancing all over the place now. Suspicious minds. We hit this pawn, it takes, takes, facing the king with the rook. Dancing with the knight. What have I always said about dancing knights? Yeah, said it recently. Yeah, dancing, it's just, oh, it's not on. Issue is, if we do take, he takes, then his rook is actually facing our king. Might just take with the knight, but I'm going to take anyway. So he will take with this. The knight can come in, but it's not got anything devastating. It could actually hit the king because the pawn won't be able to take. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. And we're obviously going to fall into something at some point. Let's keep going anyway. I want to see what the magic is. We're still plumping for this here, but they may just come here with the queen now. Going to put the check on the king. It's also putting a check on the queen. The pawn can't take, so the king has to move, so it looks like we'll get the queen. Yes. Okay, so that's um, reducing blunders. Hmm, interesting. I don't think I need to do any analysis. We did it in the game. I think it was a mouse slip. Um, is there not a take back thing on this? Maybe, maybe not. Oh, there is, isn't there? Yeah. Well, maybe they, they didn't ask for a take back, so... Anyway, that's um, reducing blunders.